Well, what is this? Well, today on The Boiling Point, I'm gonna to talk to Steven Taylor and he's gonna be able to tell you a little bit about what this thing does. Welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware and this is Steven Taylor. Now, Steven, we've got something pretty cool that we like to talk about. You know, we got into this hot water thing several years back. Uh, we have found that uh, there's some other ways to do it, right? And so yeah. you, we've got some stuff that we're that coming out with that I uh, wanted to just kind of go through. Pretty slick system here. Pretty slick system. We've, we've got a system set up now where we have uh, plate and frame heat exchangers in here so that we can have, you know, uh, processed water and potable water out of the same unit. Um, okay. What, real quick, processed water? Heating water. Okay. That's for heating applications. And then potable, potable water, drinking water, showers, that type of thing, okay. food process, that, okay. that, that type of application. And obviously potable water is something you want to make sure that you're not, you don't have contaminants. Yeah, and all you got to so, have well, clean water so uh, you keep the two of them separated. Right. And then this is a, a pretty, pretty cool system we've, we put together here. So we've got two heaters back there. Uh, we call them boilers. Uh, the manufacturers call them heaters. The way this thing is designed is that We've got a glycol solution between the boiler and the and the each plate and frame heat exchanger. So we can run either either plate and frame, or we can run both of them. Okay. Uh, we can run potable water and heating water out of the same system, or we can just run run one or the other. The the cool thing about it with that uh, glycol solution in there that stays charged all the time, we don't have to worry about it freezing up. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about contaminants getting into the boiler or the heater itself. Mm -hmm. Any contaminants stay contained in the heat exchanger, so we don't have to clean in that. It's gonna make servicing a ton easier for the, for the, for the system. Uh, just gonna make it a lot more versatile unit than, than anything we've had in the past. The other thing that, that, that we've designed into these two, we've got another set of connections here that come right out of the heater. So let's say you're on a job site where they need construction site, they need potable water, they need heating water. They've also got a big air coil fan that they mm. need to provide heat somewhere. So we can run hoses out of this in that air coil and get them heat for, for hot air into the building itself where construction site or whatever it happens to be. So it's, Very cool. it's a really cool system. What type of uh, temperatures are we talking about? Uh, <clears throat> typical the same, 180, 190 degrees. They're, 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 you know, it's, it's a typical hot water system. Mm -hmm. um, we can go up a little higher than that, but we typically don't want to get above 200. Uh, so 180, 190, and we can drop down to 140 if we need to. Right. The other thing that's cool about these plate and frames is that, you know, with a typical hot water system, we got a small delta T. Mm -hmm. We can't have a 100 degree delta T on a typical hot water system. With this plate and frame, it doesn't care. So we can run, you know, 40 degrees back into it, 140, 180 out of it, plate and frame doesn't care. It, 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 it can take that shock and take that del big delta T where the bore itself can't. So that's, it, it makes it a lot more versatile system. As far as the uh, heat exchangers, you just said, you just made a, a comment about a, a plate and frame heat exchanger. Mm -hmm. Another, maybe just talk about the difference between a plate and frame and a tube and shell. A, a shell and tube heat exchanger is just what it says. It's it's a big shell and it's got coil tubes inside of it, so the liquid goes through the the tubes themselves, and then the the outside is typically steam. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll use that to heat the water or whatever solution we're going through there. Uh, with a plate and frame, it's a completely s different s system. You've got plates, plate and frame. It's a big frame set up. It's got plates in there. And so the, you have uh, on this side, um, you've got uh, water from the heater itself. And the other side, you've got water coming into the system. So they're two separate systems, but it's real thin stainless steel plates in there. And, and they do a great job of heat transfer and they're really easy to clean. So they're it's a very, very nice system. That, that plate and frame heat exchanger, for a shell and tube, the, the shell and tube would be twice that size. Okay. So they're a lot smaller, a lot more efficient, great system for what we're doing here. Now the systems that we, we have, obviously, in our other units that we've got, we actually can do both, but we've elected to kind of pick and choose the units to do that, correct? Yeah, because if you, if you use one on a, on a potable job and, and then the next job is a heating job, before you put it back on a potable job, you've got to clean it. Mm -hmm. You've got to sanitize the unit. We run a mm -hmm. citric acid. We have a, a company come in and recertify them mm -hmm. to put them back on a potable job. So make sure that we've got a clean system going on that potable water job. Where this one, we don't have that issue because we've got them separated. Okay. So one, one side is potable, the other is processed. So we're, we're, we're clean. We're in good shape. Now, you actually said earlier, you said that you literally can run two things at once. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, right. One, two of them at one time, and, one and, and you can run three. You can run, yeah, you can run, run the, 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 the for the air coal as well. So yeah, yeah. Well, you can run. Where other units, it's either or. Right. You either run process or you run potable, but you can't run both. This one, you can run both plus plus an air coil. So they're again, it's a much more versatile unit. The other thing that that we've done with these is is our other units are either propane or natural gas. Mm. We can't run fuel oil. So we've been missing jobs especially in the New York City area where all they have is, is oil yeah. projects where they're out in the field somewhere where they don't have uh, access to natural gas or propane, we can pull a fuel tank up beside of and run diesel fuel. Oh, wow. Makes them a lot more versatile. Yeah, very cool. Um, I know that there's uh, they've got uh, several burners on this, so I'd they like do. to go take a look at those real yep. quick. Let's go look at them. All right, now as uh, Forrest Gump says, uh, I may not be a smart man, <laughs> <laughs> but why do we have four burners on this thing? <clears throat> Six, actually. Six burners, right. Yeah. You've, got, cause you've got two heaters, you've got two for natural gas, two for propane, two for, for diesel fuel. Okay. Just makes it really simple. You don't have to worry about orifices, any of that stuff. 20 minutes, you pop the burner out, stick the other one in, a couple of connections, quick connects on the, on the electrical. Um, makes them really simple to, to change out. Okay, all right. So. We got the tanks behind here, or boilers behind here, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, how they how they working? And and the the these burners are strictly storage. This yep. is where, where they're storing them. Yep. They they actually plug in on the other side where you plug them into the bottom of the boiler. Okay. Um, each one of them is 900,000 BTU, so we got 1.8 million output uh, available with the two of them together. Okay. Uh, again, uh, these are the most versatile units we've ever designed and put into the fleet because of fuel, what we can put output from them. Uh, they're just the uh, glycol, the glycol solution in them. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to yeah. worry about them freezing up freezing in up. there. Mm -hmm. Just, just a lot of things make these things really, really versatile for us. Awesome. Well, we've got them in our fleet, and they are ready to start rolling. Ready to go. Um, so give these guys a call if uh, you need something. But, but also just to learn a little bit about the plate and frame heat exchangers, and also uh, just the. Um, Maybe just the, the, the shell and tube, you know, just talking a little bit about it, several yep. things here, yep. um, as well as potable and heating. I mean, and those are heating. things that I uh, think that our, our viewers love to learn, so appreciate yep. all that. So yep. we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. <laughs>